Hello everyone. In this video, we will see how the post analysis checks referred to using the abbreviation as PAC are performed and how we can see the results or outcome of those checks. So to start with, once the analysis is performed under this PAC and design menu, we first need to create the post analysis check criteria. The PAC criteria is just a set of rules that instructs the program what checks to perform and the data that needs to be used in those checks. When we are creating the criteria, we need to associate the analysis criteria with the PAC. When we do so, the program will fetch list of service load combinations for which the PACs are performed. Note that these checks can be performed for ultimate cases too, even though this is normally not the practice. To do that, we have to click on this button here and if we want to perform the post analysis checks for ultimate condition, we can select the check ULS option from here. If the program is instructed to do the PAC for ultimate load cases too, then the list of ultimate load cases too is fetched by the program automatically from the analysis criteria assigned with the PAC criteria. Among the checks available for inclusion in the PAC criteria are the sliding check and the overturning check. By default, these checks are set true, which indicates that they should be performed. If we want to ignore these two checks, we can simply uncheck the checkboxes shown here. Also, there is an option here to include the soil passive pressure in computing the resistance of the foundation system to the destabilizing force or moment. When we select this option, the program calculates the passive force only for the mat thickness. Also, the resistance is calculated using the passive pressure coefficient that was entered as an input when the soil property was created. The next item is to provide the value of the factor of safety, FOS for short, for each check and mention the percentage increase if we want to allow an increased value of the soil bearing capacity, either for earthquake and wind load cases. Once we have provided the above input, we need to create the criteria by clicking on this create button. Once the criteria is created, we have the option to review the list of load combinations for which the check is performed, the type of checks that should be done for each load case, assign multipliers on the soil bearing capacity and pile capacities on a load case by load case basis. To do so, when we click on this button, show, the window that we see here will appear. Notice that there are check boxes and edit boxes through which we can make any changes we desire on a load case by load case basis for service and ultimate combinations. One thing we need to note is that if we are performing the check for ultimate load combinations, then the soil or pile properties also needs to have been specified for the ultimate state at the time of creating the soil or pile supports for the foundation. After all the required settings are created, we have to assign this criteria to the mat. For doing this, we have to select the mat to which we want to assign the criteria. Over here, under the post analysis, we can select criteria to be assigned. Once the PAC criteria is assigned, we can proceed to perform the PA post analysis check. 
provided that the mat has already been analyzed. After the check is performed, firstly, we will see the soil capacity envelope. Here, if the value is greater than 1, it means that the actual pressure is greater than the soil capacity, which means it is a failure condition. Further, when we hover the mouse above the various nodes on the mat, the tooltip will show the critical load combination and corresponding utilization ratio for the highlighted node. If we have assigned piles to the mat, we can see the results for pile capacity utilization in compression, tension and shear. If we want to view the PAC results in the report format, we can view it from here. For the mat, select the PAC report from here. Over here, we can see the type of report we wish to generate. All the details related to the check performed will be presented here. So that brings us to a conclusion of the topic related to creating post analysis check criteria and viewing its results. Thank you for watching.